Holy Gospel from St. Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts and dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified. For these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. And he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This they will... This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. But you will be hated by all because of my name. But not a hair on your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I'd like to begin today with a prayer taken from a song by Steve and Vicki Cook, titled, We Belong to You Alone. Let us pray. Lord, we belong to you alone, for you have redeemed us with your sacrifice. Our lives are not our own. You've held plans for us through the ages. You give each life a call. Lord, we belong to you alone. So come, dwell in us. Make your glory known. Our greatest joy is found in knowing you, belonging to you alone. Amen. On this Confirmation Sunday, we celebrate God's calling and sending of us. God's calling is personal. God calls you and me by name. In the words of the prophet Isaiah, I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. When we hear God calling us, calling each of us by name, confirming that we belong to God, assuring us that we are loved, and that love is unconditional. When we hear this assurance of our belovedness, We know this calling from God is a very different kind of calling than that of the world, where we are measured by other people's standards, by how we look, by what we have, by what we accomplish. In the world, your belovedness is often tied to what you do, and your honor is earned by your success, whether in school or sports or career. And your value is based on your achievements gained. And if you want to be somebody, you need to wear the right clothes, cut the right body shape, and be in the right group. And you just plain have to get ahead. One of the amazing things about Jesus was the way he reached out to people who had lost sight of their true belovedness.
like Levi, who we read about in Luke 6, and I read from the message. Jesus went out and saw Levi at his work collecting taxes, and Jesus said, Come along with me. And Levi did. He walked away from everything and went with Jesus. Levi gave a large dinner at his home for Jesus. Everybody was there. Taxmen and other dis- disreputable characters were guests at the dinner. The Pharisees and their religious scholars came to Jesus' disciples greatly offended. What is he doing eating and drinking with crooks and sinners? Jesus heard about it and spoke up. Who needs a doctor? The healthy or the sick? I'm here inviting outsiders, not insiders. An invitation to a changed life, changed inside and out. There are all kinds of things that come up in our lives in this broken world that we live in whether in family or in school or in work, where we can come to a place where we are on the outside, no longer loved, no longer feel like we are the beloved of God. Times when that love seems lost, and maybe we do too. This past summer, backpacking on the Pacific Crest Trail, I think the most memorable thing for me was the people I met. I had the opportunity to show the Confirmands and their mentors some pictures of both the scenery and some of the people in September in one of our first classes together. One picture that I did not show you was of Tom and Donna and their daughters Iris and Lila, who I spent time with over the course of two days on the trail in southern Oregon. The first day when I met them, it was just trail talk. Where are you coming from? Where are you going? How long have you been on the trail? Where is the next water source? Just trail talk. The second day happened to be Iris's 18th birthday. And even though we didn't hike together during the day, we ended up at the same campsite at Hyatt Lake at the end of the day. We set up our tents near the same campfire ring. And as the girls were down by the lake, Tom and Don and I were visiting by the campfire. And Don, out of the blue, said, I had a bad day today. I had a bad day on the trail. I feel even worse now, being it's Iris' birthday. And I'm sure she and Lila could sense it. It was just a really bad day for me. And I said, how so? And Donna said, I recently lost my best friend to cancer. We had her funeral three weeks ago. I spent a lot of time with her at the end. And I was with her when she died. I'm still kind of numb. And sometimes I feel afraid, and sometimes I just feel angry. And then Donna looked at me and said, Have you lost anybody close? And I told her my father had died seven months before. And we talked about grief, especially the pain for perplexity and the sadness when it is someone we love who is young. We talked about life and God. And it was a mystery to me how that conversation with Donna and Tom, who had just met the day before, kept unfolding. Talking about vulnerabilities of life and the journey and the meaning of faith. It wouldn't be until later in the evening when the girls came back from the lake. As it was getting dark, we were having s'mores around the campfire to celebrate Iris' birthday. We talked about more mundane things like school, where we lived. 
kind of work we did. Tom and Donna being teachers in California. Me being a Lutheran pastor from Wisconsin. What strikes me about the story of Levi and the story of Donna and Tom and their family, no matter what the circumstances of our lives might be, including experiences that make us feel cut off from love. And the gospel today was very blunt about the tumults and the terrors that will come at us in this world. And in the midst of all the terrible messiness of the realities of our lives, Jesus comes to us and calls us, each of us by name. Come along with me. Come along with me. I want to thank you, the Compromints, for the way in which you spoke about your own lives on Wednesday when you presented your faith projects, and especially about the way in which you talked about some of the challenging and difficult things in your lives and the way in which God is with you. That was inspiring, very inspiring. Samuel Wells puts it this way as he reflects on the way God comes to us in our lives in Jesus. If God had not dwelt with us in Christ, we wouldn't know we were beloved children of the Heavenly Father, made to be God's companions, empowered with the Holy Spirit. If Christ had not died in agony, we would not have discovered that we mean everything to God. If Christ had not risen from the dead, we would not know that our future is in God forever. If the Spirit had not come, we would not know the joy of this good news. And if we didn't have the gift of baptism, we couldn't enjoy these wonders of walking together in the community of Jesus that we call the church. We were made to be companions to God and a blessing to others to the whole creation. Jesus comes to us over and over in our lives. Come along with me. Be my companion. And Jesus makes us all friends, companions through his saving death and resurrection. And Jesus calls us to come along with him, this powerful, spirit-filled, dynamic of his love calls us to live and love and show his love for others, to be companions with others in Jesus' name. Melanie Wolf, in her reflection, The Journey, wrote about a companion in her life. Come on, let's take a walk, my friend suggested. And walk we did. Over two years as we slogged through the mire of grief, as I struggled to breathe life into the hole in my heart. Never did she walk in front of me and pull me along the pathway of pain. Nor did she prod me from behind, encouraging me to pick up the pace, to get through the rocky, forlorn landscape of my grief. She walked instead by my side, in silent compassion, as anguish found words. Now these many years later, I realize I walked with God over those treacherous miles, and I am forever grateful. My friends, Jesus walks with you in all things. And Jesus invites you, come along with me. And in your beloved companionship with Jesus, Jesus will bring others into your life. Listen and look for the people in the ways you are being called to be companions to others, to bring the community of Jesus to them, that they might know God's love and faithfulness too. Amen.